how to draw a detailed representation of a DNA strand. So we're going to start by drawing the backbone. So to do that, we will draw a single line and we will hold the shift key uh, in order to keep it straight. So we'll draw a line about like that. Then we will go up to the effects window and go down to distort and transform then click on zigzag and that what this does is it adds a zigzag appearance to the line right now it is a you, it makes corners to draw the zigzag but we want to make this smooth so we'll go over here and click smooth we will make it larger about like that um, the the you can look at the details um, in the video to see the exact values, but these are just approximate values. And we're going to make two ridges per segment. And then we let's make it a little larger. And we'll make it like that and say OK. And then now we're going, that's, so that's a single backbone. And now we're going to make the second backbone. We'll do that by copying this line by holding the Alt key until you see that little arrow that shows on the bottom right of the mouse pointer. Then we're going to click with the left mouse button and hold and drag that, um, that backbone or that line. And then we're going to release with the mouse and then release the Alt button. So now we've copied that line. And what we want to do is we want to keep make a we want to make a single turn of this um, this uh, DNA strand. We don't want to make more than that because what we're going to do is we're going to apply it to a brush up here on the right, and we're going to let Adobe Illustrator do the rest of the work for us. So first we're going to um, trim this backbone so that it is a single uh, turn okay so the first thing to, to do that we need to expand this line so we're gonna highlight both or we're gonna select both of the lines and then we're going to go up to object and then click on expand appearance so what this does is it creates instead of having a straight line with the appearance property of a zigzag this actually draws the line along that zigzag so this so this is now a curved line as opposed to a straight line as it was before and so now we're going to um, trim this um, this DNA strand so the first so starters we're going to click on this DNA strand and we're going to go over here to you might see an eraser or a pair of scissors if you see an eraser hold uh, left mouse button down until the window window pops up and then click on scissors so we're gonna go along this line and and you see this purple line that shows up we're gonna trim it right where that intersects with the line so we're just gonna click on that line notice that I had this line selected when I did that you have to have this line selected in order to apply the scissors Okay, so now I'm going to click on this segment and delete it. What we want to do is now we want to trim it at the same exact spot over here. Actually, it would be, um, yeah, it would be over here. Yeah, this is right. Okay, so we're going to go back to the scissors and we're going to trim it right here. Okay, now we're going to delete that. And then we have a little stray anchor point. We're going to delete that as well. Okay, so you can see it go. It has the top of the hump, and then it goes down to the trough, and then it goes back to the top peak again. So that's one complete turn. We're going to do the same thing here. So now it starts at this portion, goes down, goes up again and so we're going to trim it right about here but we need to know exactly where to trim it so I'm going to use a line to do that I'm going to draw a line from here and I'm going to hold the shift key to keep it horizontal 
And I'm going to go past this line over here. So that this is just a guide for me to know exactly where to trim this line. So I'm going to click on this line here, go back to the scissors, then I am going to click right where it says intersect between this line and that. And now I'm going to delete that line and then delete that stray anchor point. And now I'm going to click on this line and delete that. And we want to make sure we did a good job, so we're going to highlight this. I'm going to hold the Alt key and then drag it over here. Remember to, whenever you're holding the Alt key to copy, remember to release on your mouse first. Now we're going to pull it down here and, and notice that it is, it looks perfectly lined up, so that's exactly what we want. Let's delete that. Okay, so now this is the backbone of the DNA strand, and it might not look good at this point, uh, but we have a lot of things to do to it first and for it to look like DNA. So it may not look like DNA yet, but it will in a little bit. Next thing we need to do is to draw the um, the the phosphate backbone that we're going to overlay on this line, and I'm going to use this uh, line as a reference to approximate the size of the atoms. So I'm going to go over here to this rectangle tool, but I'm going to click and hold, go down to the ellipse tool because we're going to draw circles. So I'm going to make a circle about that big. It's, we're not making this exact. It's going to be clear that it's not exact. Um, so as long as you draw a circle about that size, it's going to be okay. We're going to go up here to the stroke width and or color. Click that down arrow. And we're going to click none. Then this is the fill. We're going to click down there. We're going to make it blue. Uh, typically when you see phosphate, you see it as, as some variation of blue. So we're going to make the phosphate backbone uh, as a bunch of blue atoms, but we want them to have slightly different colors. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to click on this object, hold Alt. Let, let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm zooming in by holding the Alt key and spinning my mouse button. Okay, now I'm going to hold the Alt key again, but this time I'm going to click on the circle and drag it over. And now we want to make this a shade of blue that's the same hue as this other blue. To do that, I'm going to go up to the color guide. I'm going to click over here. Now, if you don't see this color guide, go up to Windows and go down to color guide, click on it, you see a window that pops up, drag it and drop it over here because it is very useful so you'll use it quite frequently. So click on this and we're going to select that, that's a little bit darker of a color. Now we're going to hold the alt key and copy it again. We're going to make it this time a little lighter. And we're gonna we're just gonna bring that over here. Copy this there, and let's let's click on there. We're just gonna make a a variety of colors, and we want to bring this to the back. Actually, oh, we'll do that later. Um, I'm gonna bring this one over here. We want to make it uh, somewhat circular. Okay. Now we're going to bring this circle up front. Bring So I'm going to right click on the object so this menu pops up. Go down here to arrange and then click uh, bring to front. Arrange. Bring to bring to front. Okay. Okay. So that looks about right. Okay, we're going to highlight these objects and then we're going to drag them over to the brush. So I'm going to click, I'm going to drag it over and then I'm going to move it to this brushes. And before I get to that, if you don't see the, this brush icon, go up to Windows and then go down to um, Brushes and then a window will pop up, drag it and drop it in this uh, toolbar over here. So I'm going to drag it over and then you'll see a plus sign and you will see um, this this um, 
menu uh, hi be highlighted in blue. That's a good sign. So you're going to release it. And then another menu is going to pop up and you're going to click on Scatterbrush. You're going to click on OK right now. And then what, we're going to go to Rotation, click down and click Random. And we're going to move this all the way to minus 180 and this all the way to positive 180. What this is going to do is it's going to randomly rotate this um, this scat this pattern uh, along the line, and you'll see what it's doing in a little bit. So I'm going to click OK. So now we're going to click on this line, and then we're going to click on the scatter brush that we just created. So now it's going to copy that. Um, that pattern along the line and you, and you might notice that it's going to randomly rotate that uh, pattern. Okay. And now we want to we want to we want to decrease the spacing here because you notice that there's some gaps and we want to avoid that. So we're going to double click on this um, pattern brush and then we're going to go over to spacing and we're just going to move this a little bit over. That might be a little too close. That looks pretty good. I'm going to say OK. And then we're going to click Apply it to Strokes. And we're going to do the same thing to the other line. Okay. Okay, so it's starting to look good. Now it's it's kind of nice to have a slightly different color for one of these strands. Um, so it gives it a little bit of a better uh, 3D appearance. So we're going to do that. We're, we're going to recolor this artwork here. So we're going to click on that line. We're going to go up to uh, the color guide. And we're going to go down to edit or apply colors. And then we're going to click Reset. It's going to return it back to the colors that, um, that it was originally. We're going to click Edit. Okay, so this is um, the color wheel and it allows you to recolor this, uh, the, all the circles in this line. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, link Harmony Colors. Click on that. What that's going to do is going to make sure that the relationship between these colors stay the same. So now what I can do is I can move it around and it's going to recolor that artwork. Okay. okay. Well, what we want it, so I'm going to let's uh, reset it. Okay. So I want to keep that hue the same, but I want to make it just a little darker. So I'm going to move this line here just to darken it a little bit. Okay. I'll click on OK. The next thing we want to do is we want so we want this line to go over this um, the the previous the the line the lighter line which is that's what's doing so that's good and then we want it to go under this line, okay, and we want this line here to go over this darker line. To do that, we're just going to uh, use the scissors tool again, and we're going to trim, or we're going to cut right here. Okay, and now we're going to select this line, and we're going to right click and and go down to arrange and click bring to front and we're going to cut this line right here right at this anchor point and we're going to right click go down to arrange and and click on send to back and then we're going to do the same here we're going to click on this right click arrange bring to front and click on this right click arrange Send it back. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to make the base pairs. So we're going to draw a line 
a little bit inward. We're going to hold the shift key so it's vertical. Okay, and I'm going to copy this line. We're going to go along this DNA strand. We want uh, we want ten of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. So I'm going to move this inward. We want it to this space to be roughly the same space as this. Okay, we're going to highlight these objects. And then I'm going to click on. I'm going to hold the shift key and then left click on this line so that it's no longer selected left click on this line so it's no longer selected but I'm going to do the same thing until these blue lot li these lines with the circles are no longer selected okay. so now I only have the black lines I'm going to go over here to the alignment tool uh, you can either click over here and click horizontal distribute center or I can go up to the top and click horizontal distribute center so that keeps everything equal. Okay. And so now we're going to apply that blue brush stroke to um, these lines. But then afterwards we're going to change the color. So let's just click on these and do that. And now we're going to recolor these lines. So I'm going to go up to the, the color guide then go down to um, the recolor artwork and I'm going to click reset then edit and I want to make sure that I l l link the harmony and now you can really choose whatever color you want um, you know maybe let's see I don't know orange seems seems nice we're going to click on OK. And now we're going to click on this and click right click on it and we're going to click on arrange, bring to front. And then we're going to click on this one, right click, arrange, bring to front. Okay. And now we want to shorten these lines so that they um, line up. Let's undo what I just did. So I'm going to click on this so that it shortens it up. So I'm just going to click on that anchor point. We're going to leave that one. Actually, we're going to leave that. This one will be fine. This one's the one we want to shorten. Okay. Notice that it's correcting the pattern accordingly. That might be a little too... This one can be adjusted. Sometimes it wants to move it instead. And the reason why we're doing this is think of this as a, as a three-dimensional rotation of these base pairs. It's, it's rotating it um, as it's, if, if, if you're looking along the base pairs, it's spinning. Um, on the axis, uh, it's kind of hard to describe, um, it's would be spinning backwards. And so it's going to look more narrow at these at these points, these transition points. Um, it's going to look the most wide during this region. It's going to be narrow again. Now it's not completely narrow because the base pairs actually extrude beyond um, it. it I would do it about. It's difficult to explain. It it's it's wide. The base pairs are actually wider than the backbone. Uh, whoops. Then the then I just did Control Z to undo that move that I just did. So it's actually wider than the backbone. Um, so you don't want to narrow it to to where you can't see it anymore. Uh, so let's let's move shorten this one. About like that. So that looks pretty good. Let's shorten this one. Okay. So there we go. This one needs to be shortened a little bit. Okay. So that looks really good. Okay. 
And so the next thing we're going to do is, well, let me just show you what the what it looks like. So I'm going to highlight it or, or select it. I'm going to drag it over here. Do I see that plus sign? Click on this time. I'm going to click on pattern brush. Click on OK. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to this selection. This is so this is the corner up here. This is going to, as it's making a right hand turn and I'm going to click on auto between. So I clicked on this arrow, this little downward arrow, and then I click on auto between. This is going to bend that DNA strand. So now I'm going to click on, this is going to be the inner corner. This is a left hand turn. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on auto between. I'm going to click on OK. So now let's take a look at what this is going to look at. So I'm going to click on the pencil tool. Now if you don't see something that looks exactly like a pencil, you know, click and hold. So you might see the shaper tool. Don't click on that. Click on the pencil tool. I'm going to draw a wavy line and click on it. And you start to see a DNA strand. Now it's not perfect though. You see a gap right here. So we need to fix that because it looks almost good, um, but you just we really want to get rid of that gap. So let's correct this um, pattern and what we're the way we're going to do is we're going to trim we're going to erase a portion of either side and that's going to close that gap but first let's say let's copy this so I'm going to hold alt and then drag it because the next change we're going to do um, won't allow us to modify some of the aspects of this uh, design and so we want to keep that original piece over here just in case we want to change things about it. Okay, so I'm going to click on this line, hold shift, click on this line, hold, I'm holding shift, I'm clicking on this line, and this line. Okay, so now I have the blue line selected. And um, actually, I, why don't I, rather than do that, I'm just going to select the whole object, and I'm going to click object, expand appearance and what this does is rather than have a bunch of lines where that that these uh, scatter brushes are applied to them it converts those to a bunch of circles okay and we need to do that in order to use the eraser tool like we want to do it what we want to do so we click on the eraser tool and we want to erase a portion of these circles okay and so it's important that we first expand the object in order because we want to actually create a straight line along these circles if we would have erased it beforehand we would have just shortened the line rather than and then it would have just redrawn those patterns on that line now this will actually chop the circles themselves okay so to change the the properties of the eraser see I have the eraser um, selected here I will click I will press enter on the keyboard and this opens the options menu for that tool and you'll that this is some uh, a common feature for a lot of the tools if you press enter a lot of times you can modify the properties of that tool so what we wanted, we, we want to make this 90 degrees. It is, so that makes it vertical. We want the roundness to be zero, so that's a straight line. And we want the size, we want the size to be a little larger because we noticed that it wasn't quite going across the, um, the DNA strand. So we're just gonna make it a little larger. I don't know, I guess 185 points seems fine. Click OK. And then we're going to erase this portion. Now it's important to know that you have to have the object selected in order to erase anything on that line or all, all, to in order to erase that any portion of that object. The eraser tool only works on selected objects which is actually a very nice feature once you learn how to use it uh, properly. 
So we're going to erase this portion over here. So we've just trimmed a portion here and a portion over there. It doesn't really matter how much. Um, as long as you've trimmed a decent amount of it. Click OK. So now we have it trimmed on either side. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to drag it over and then add it. Click on Pattern Brush. Click on OK. And then again, I'm, we're going to do this all over. I'm going to click on Auto Between. Click over here on this down arrow and click Auto Between. And I'm going to click on OK. Now notice when you did that, it returned that object back to the original location. Now I'm going to click on this line that I have before and I'm just going to, once I have it selected, I'm going to click on this new brush that we've created and notice that it closed the gap now. And so now you have a very detailed representation of DNA.